Chapter 56 Enoch's Instruction on How to Probe One's Heart The difference between the light of the intellect and the light of the heart. Temporal love versus eternal love. After this speech by Abidam, the twelve stepped back a few paces, following Enoch's instruction who, staying with them, accompanied them into their hearts spiritually and showed them, through a brief speech, what it means to probe one's own heart and become aware of what is, or goes on, in the heart. And this was his speech. Listen, dear brothers, the most holy, most loving Father Abidam Jehovah Emmanuel Abba has spoken to you. Having had to listen to your lengthy childlike praise, probe your hearts and tell me faithfully what you will find there. This was the meaning of the most holy speech. But the most holy father also foresaw that you will not grasp this meaning. Therefore, he instructed me secretly in my heart to guide you into your hearts and thus also into the hidden meaning of these, his last words, which he spoke to you all in the end. This must surely surprise you a little, but you all will soon realise that it is not too easy to turn one's eyes into one's own heart without much ado and then probe the same completely. For behold, until now, the intellect of your brain was predominantly the light of your soul with you all. But the forever living spirit, which dwells in the heart of the soul, and is the alone true innermost living light of life, has never been awakened in you. But if this has not been awakened, it is futile to look into the heart. For where there is no light, what might be seen there? Or can anyone see even a span ahead in a pitch dark night? And this applies even more to the spiritual vision within one's own heart, where no one can see anything unless his spirit has first been actively awakened in him. But you will now be asking, how and whereby can the spirit be awakened then? Look, this is why I was instructed to guide you here. And having safely arrived here, we shall, with the aid of him who gave us all this holy instruction, arrive at the goal we all must reach according to his supreme, best and most perfect holy will. This is the way and the sole means by which to awaken the Spirit. Namely, that you all turn in the heart, that is, in the most perfect love to the Most Holy Father, full of trust 
and just selflessness and sincerity. But when you will perceive that it becomes hotter and hotter in your heart, then watch your heart. For this is the time of ignition and light. And once your hearts will all be aglow in their love for God, the most holy, most loving Father, turn within, and you will behold the wonders of eternal life within you. But take note also of this, namely, that you must not begin to love the Most Holy Father only because of this. For the Most Holy Father wants to be loved for his own sake. Also, that your love may not be of the kind that lasts from today till tomorrow. For with a merely temporal love, not even weak woman is contented, let alone the eternal God. Your life will be like your love. If the love is temporal, also the life will be transient like the love, which is the sole condition of life. And such love is without light. However, if the love is of an eternal nature, the life is also like it. And behold, this eternal love is only the lightful awakening of the eternal spirit, which as such is nothing but pure love. Now you know everything. Do accordingly, and you will soon be quite capable of contemplating your innermost heart. Amen. And Basidial promptly grasped Enoch's hand and said to him, my above all, dear brother, with what outpourings of my heart shall I now thank you for this exceedingly glorious service rendered to our most needy hearts. Behold, speaking for myself, in this point at issue, I have been blind up to this very moment. For, as you have gathered precisely, at least as far as I am concerned. Until now, I have sought only to train the intellect and to analyse whatever I came upon, as I thought by myself. God's perfection differs from our imperfection merely where the alone supremely perfect intellect is concerned. Wherefore, we can approach God only through the exclusive development of our intellect. Here I need not stress to you with empty words that I then, owing to this misconception, never paid any attention to the heart. For you have, anyway, already well noticed the inclination of our hearts. But only now do I see how utterly foolish and futile this often horrible effort was. For of what benefit is to the dead all this vast knowledge? For a thousand hollow breaths, the night would be indescribably better. But the living is not in need of worldly knowledge. Or what should the stone blind benefit from the light, 
and what the living, whose spirit is itself an exceedingly bright light. Behold, brother, this used to be unknown to me. But now that you have knocked at my breast through the Most Holy Father's grace, my heart promptly responded and said, Love, love, love is the great word of all existence. If you have love forever in God, you have also all life in and out of God and everything that belongs to it. If you do not have that, you have then nothing but pure death within. O oh brother, behold, now death has left me. What immense gift you have therefore bestowed on me, and surely on us all, by revealing to us the main cause for our death. Of how much gratitude from us all you are therefore worthy. But now I know to whom all gratitude is due. So let me now rush to the Most Holy Father. But Enoch told him, Just have a little more patience until the others will be like you, and you have become completely luminous in your heart. Amen.